are some of the tools that can come in handy when napping. A copper bopper for percussion flaking, a copper nail for finer pressure flaking, an abrader to rough up razor sharp edges so you have a better platform to strike, and a leather pad so you don't tear up your jeans. I got my tools at flintnappingtools.com. You're probably familiar with the concept of a crystal lattice. It's the way a mineral's atoms line up. Here's an image from dbooth.net showing a typical sodium chloride lattice. Coidal fracture is a curved, shell-like fracture pattern characteristic of fine-grained igneous rocks and volcanic glasses, especially obsidian, but also jasper, agate, chert, and flint. The fracture has smooth, shell-like convexities and concavities, and it is derived from the Greek word for shell, which is conch. You can't use most crystals to make an arrowhead because they tend to cleave along crystal planes. The best rocks for clip napping don't cleave at all. They fracture. If you ever saw what happens when a kid shoots a BB gun at a glass window, you know that characteristic cone-like fracture. It's called a conchoidal fracture. Obsidian is amazing because it breaks off sometimes and it already looks like an arrowhead. According to Wikipedia, American interest in napping can be traced back to the study of a California Native American called Ishii, who lived in the early 20th century. Ishii taught scholars and academics traditional methods of making stone tools, which ignited a small craze in napping among archaeologists and prehistorians. Many groups then sprung up in the U.S. and Europe. These organizations teach various ways of shaping stone tools today, and that's what led us to check on the Puget Sound Nappers, a group of about 250 dedicated individuals loosely organized in the Seattle area. What originally drew me to napping was that during my rock hounding adventures, I've picked up lots of chips and pieces of jasper and agate that look for all the world like broken artifacts. A couple of times I even went through my rock bag at home and found crude hand axes or points, so I wanted to learn how to do it myself. At the nap in, some of the members brought examples of their best stuff to show off. We saw points made from jasper, obsidian, Wyoming quartzite, yellow kaolin, moss agate, jet black chert from Texas, translucent Swedish flint, and Arkansas novaculite. You can see that with practice and determination, you can turn common rock hound material into fantastic works of art. Original PSK nap-in. Um, originally we met down at the WSU Extension Office because that's where I work and I didn't tell anybody so that's where we did it. And right now, thanks to Jim and Jennifer Dennis, we have the use of this excellent facility. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. So far he's just looking. I got some rocks. You got some rocks and tools. Actually on this one you have about as much as I do. I got a couple sign up sheets here. Uh, Jim, was this in yours? Yeah. For emails and stuff? Yeah. Do you want everybody to sign that one? Yeah, that would be nice. I'll tell me who's here, but I know it's just picture. Okay. okay. Mostly Jim's is more important than mine, but if you want to sign both of them, feel free. I just like to know who's been here and who's not. Uh, we got donuts. Uh, uh, their diet, of course. Uh, we got coffee, we got water for hot cocoa. Um, lemonade. Jim made some uh, excellent venison chili. Nice. So feel free. Uh, I think that's all I have to say. Uh, break some rock. There's free rock in the center. And it looks like we don't have a lot of people here. So just have at it. I forgot. Uh, do you change the angle sometimes for different things? Yeah. After a while, I know I watched a couple videos of like DC Waldorf, and he said, and I remember when I was kind of learning, he said, after a while it becomes second nature about how to hold the angle and what angle to strike it. I said, you're kidding me. But it does. It just takes a lot of rock break. <laughs> What you making, Garrett? No. You never know what that is. Yeah. You wrote uh, Jim Trails, or you co-authored this one? Yeah, I wrote them. I, I just, for whatever reason, I just happened to run across some of the, there's somebody that's debating you on your forums going back and forth, and I ran into those conversations. My first arrowhead, I'm so proud. This 7 inch axe head was created by Mick Hill in about 30 minutes out of a chunk of material I collected from Glass Buttes, Oregon. 
I managed to strike up a conversation with James A. Miller, who is not only a member of the Puget Sound Nappers, but also is a member of the Washington Prospectors Mining Association. If you're a subscriber to Rock and Gem magazine, you may also have read his stuff. Jim is the resident geologist for the Nappers, and I wanted to talk to him about various materials he's used along the way. Sorry, we seem to be experiencing some technical difficulties. Please stand by as we try to correct the problem and return you to your regularly scheduled programming. Thank you. Well, if you'd been there, you'd have heard Jim talk about his website at flintnappers.com. He's got a gallery there with specimens such as Cumberland points and Dardanelle points and Hernando points and even Clovis points that he's made himself and are for sale. Jim also sells an amazing little electronic book with great research into napping materials. It's called The Flint Napper's Guide to Rock. It costs $12 and you can find a link at flintnappers.com with an easy Google search. You'll notice that there are a lot of different styles to fashion a point into. Some of them are breathtaking in their beauty. Medic! Napper down! <laughs>